Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and their effects today we're going to understand weight on another planet. Uh, in the course of this lesson we're going to look at the concept of being weightless and what we're going to do, we're going to see what is the link between mass and weight and how is weight related to gravity and so how weight can change when you go for instance on the moon or on other planets. I would like to start today by looking at a picture. Um, before I tell you something about this picture I want you just to pause this video for a minute and just to think what do you see in this picture? What do you think is happening? What it makes you wonder about? So what you see here is the first Italian female astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti this picture was taken a few years ago when she was an astronaut on the International Space Station. As you know, the International Space Station is this spaceship which is, as we speak, orbiting the Earth, normally has a crew of six astronauts coming from different parts of the globe, and normally they do about six months of shift. Uh, and, and during their time on the space station, they conduct several uh, scientific ex experiments. Inside the space station, there is this um, area, they call it the dome, it has this, all these windows normally pointing towards the Earth. And this is a place where the astronauts can relax, they can take pictures of the Earth, as you can see um, Samantha is doing. But what is important is that uh, you have probably seen uh, pictures or, or uh, even clips of astronauts in space and you can see them floating around. Now, normally uh, what happens is people say, okay, they're floating because they don't feel uh, the, the pull of gravity anymore. That is actually incorrect. Uh, although you can say that astronauts are weightless so they don't feel the weight um, it's not true they don't feel the gravity you have to think about this um, the space station is orbiting the earth because it feels the pull of gravity of the earth so in the same way also the astronauts are feeling that pull so why are they weightless so to speak it's because uh, the space station, when, you, when you're orbiting, so anything which is orbiting, is actually um, in a, a kind of free fall. So they're sort of falling down, they're falling down along um, a circular orbit. I'm going to um, expand this concept in, in another lesson, but it's really important that although uh, the astronauts are not feeling their weight, they are still within the gravitational field of the Earth. But as it, I told you earlier, uh, this video is all about mass and weight. And we will start with a very, very common misconception. Uh, let's imagine uh, you just uh, stepped onto your bathroom scale, okay, and someone comes over and asks you, okay, how much do you weigh? And you say, oh, my weight is, let's say, about 59 kilograms. Of course, uh, this I'm assuming you're familiar with the international system or metric units. And although this is the reading from your bathroom scale, this is not your weight. Okay, so the actual uh, question should be how much is your mass, which is something you will never hear, but it's actually the more correct way of addressing. So, it's really important that we have clear what is mass and what is weight. And the purpose of this video will be to really to define what are the differences between these two concepts, but also what is the relationship between them. And let's start with mass. And, and mass is, of course, a physical quantity. And as I said before, a physical quantity needs to be defined. And the definition is the amount of matter in an object. There are other definitions that you're going to meet uh, later on uh, as you proceed with your physics courses, but for now we'll be happy with just the measurement of the amount of matter in an object. So how do you find the mass of an object? You can use a balance. For instance, um, in our class we have this object it's called a triple beam balance, but there are many other types of balances. Even your bathroom scale is um, an object that you can use to measure mass. 
and not surprisingly, the uh, main, the ba as we say, the base unit uh, for the measurement of mass in an international system of units is the kilogram, and this is abbreviated kg. So the question is now, so how about weight? If mass is the thing we're measuring kilograms by stepping onto our bathroom scales, what is weight? Okay, weight, as you might already have guessed, is related to the gravitational pull, okay? And that's actually our definition of weight. Weight is the gravitational pull of an object. On the other hand, we have seen in uh, lessons before that gravity, the force is gravity, is a force. And we know already how we can measure a force. We measure a force with a newtometer, force meter, spring balance, doesn't matter how you call it. We do the same with weight. If I want to find the weight of an object, I will just put it on, uh, at the bottom of a spring balance and suspend it, and I will find the weight of an object. So the unit for measuring weight is not the kilogram, but like all forces, is the Newton. Okay, but there must be some relationship between the two. I mean, if people always say, what is your weight? And you answer, with something which is actually your mass, it's pretty obvious these two things are related. And of course they are, because the gravitational pull on you depends on how much mass you have. And actually there's a very, very simple formula, which you can see here. Uh, your weight or the weight of an object in Newtons is equal to the mass, as mentioned in kilograms, and in the case of the Earth, uh, the, the number you have to multiply is approximately 10. So just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to use 10. Um, we, you will learn later on the number is a little bit different. It's 9.8 and plus other decimals. But for now, 10 will just suffice. Now, what is, what is so special about this number? This is what we call the acceleration of gravity. Okay, uh, which is the acceleration at which an object will fall down if it was only gravity acting on it. Uh, we can also call this the strength of a local gravitational field. And what is important is that this relationship holds regardless of where you are. You are on the Earth, you are on the Moon, you are on another planet, you are in space. Okay. What changes is this number, okay? This number really tells you where you are, okay? So this is the value you have, let's say, on the surface of the Earth. If you go on the surface of the Moon, you'll have a different number. If you go in deep space, you'll have a different number again. And in the next slide, we're going to see a so-called practical example. So let's start with an example now. So we have our friend here. Uh, we call him Eddie, Eddie the elephant. And Eddie the elephant is on the earth, okay? So let's try to write down a few things about Eddie. First of all, his mass. So I will say this is a very small elephant. So I'm going to say that his mass is 600 kilograms. You, it might seem a lot to you guys, but for an elephant, this is pretty small number. Now, if you remember, the formula we saw before, no, uh, that the weight on the Earth is equal to the mass times 10. So we know that the weight of Eddy, uh, we'll use the letter W for the weight, is 600 times 10. So it's 6,000 6, newtons. Okay? And let's just, just as a reminder, we write here, this is on the Earth. Okay? So now let's consider a change of scenery. Um, our um, Eddie the elephant, as you can see, has become an astronaut and he was sent on the moon, as you can um, recognize from these craters. Of course, he has a spacesuit and an oxygen tank, etc. So Eddie for now is pretty safe. So let's write down that he is on the moon. Okay, so. All right, now. Are these values going to change? Well, first of all, 
mass. Mass is the amount of matter in eddy. That hasn't changed. The mass of eddy, the number, the type of molecules in his body haven't changed. So what we can say is the mass of eddy is still 600 kilograms. And that is really, really important, okay? Mass does not change, okay? Now, how about the weight? Now, we saw that weight depends on the mass and depends on the local gravitational field. Now, we know that the gravity on the moon is approximately one six, which means six times smaller than the gravity on Earth. So we can do a very, very simple calculation here. Instead of, of, of taking care of the mass, we just compare with the weight on the Earth. The weight on the Earth is 6,000 newtons, so we have to think, okay, how much is six times less of this number? So it's 6,000 divided by six, so the weight of eddy would be 1,000 newton. It will not be zero, remember, uh, the moon has a gravity. Every object makes on gravity. The, um, our moon is a pre-launch uh, moon, so it does have gravity, although it is way less than the gravity on Earth. So let's change the scenery once more. As you can see, Eddie now is still wearing his spacesuit, but now he's in deep space, okay? He's not in orbit, not in orbit around the Earth, not in orbit around the Moon. Let's imagine he's in deep, deep space outside the solar system, okay? So away from any gravitational fields, okay? Or as we prefer to say using scientific language, where gravitational fields are negligible, okay? means really you can ignore their effect. So I'll write here, Eddie is in space, okay? Now, what can we say now about the mass and weight of Eddie? If you remember what we saw previously, we know that mass hasn't changed. So again, I can write that the mass of Eddie is still 600 kilograms. That's very interesting. So the mass has not changed. Of course, I'm not taking into account the mass of the equipment that Eddie has, okay? I'm just talking about the mass of Eddie the elephant. It's the same on the Earth, it's the same on the Moon, and it's the same in deep space. But how about the weight? Well, in this case, we have to think, okay, what is the gravitational field strength right now? And it's zero, okay? So, if you take your mass, in this case 600 kilograms, and you multiply by zero, what you get is zero. So this is finally the situation where the weight is equal to zero newtons, okay? Now, I hope this um, pretty silly example have helped you uh, understand what is the difference and what is the relationship between mass and weight and how it changes from when you're on the Earth and when you're in space. Um, and today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarini.